The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition, a special edition of Fed Watch. And of course, uh, Fed just came out with a, a three quarter of a percent higher uh, rate increase. Uh, probably not a big surprise. Market kind of went sideways for a little while. My guess is we are going to go back and right now test those lows uh, from the last. Uh, day. And then we're going to see what actually happens. I don't think there's a lot of movement before we get uh, Powell talking at 2.30. And of course, she normally talks to 3.15. But uh, I, you know, there's just not that much to do. So hurry up and wait. That's the Army way. Uh, but uh, you know what? It doesn't matter as long as you're here at the appointed time. <coughs> The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So, as we said, um, you know, can you really tell a lot now? No. My guess is that uh, I'll run some options, uh, scans, uh, probably around 3.15, 3.30, and I'll have a much better view. But you never know when uh, Chairman Powell will drop the chalupa. And... Uh, that would be it. And, of course, he could be all rosy and sunshiny and say, you know, that's it. Uh, I think everybody, in fact, uh, I don't watch much of financial infotainment TV. I tend to uh, pick it up on the uh, Internet that congeals uh, the high, high spots or low spots of the day for these folks. Uh, but uh, they're all circling around the same thing that I've said for a while. And that is, uh, at least in my belief, although I can't prove, but I have a high confidence level in my prediction, that 80% of all the inflation is uh, hooked up to uh, energy prices. Uh, and this morning they were out uh, pounding the president, mostly because he was parroting probably one of the worst decisions of all time for a president uh, with Jimmy Carter about circa 1977-78 when he came after the energy producers. If they don't make money, they're not going to produce any more money. I've already had an email about, uh, uh, what is his name, Quintanina. Eh, I just think of, he, he's, got, uh, he's got hair like a uh, like wire. I just remember from that. He seemed to be like, a, when I've watched, he seemed to be okay. But uh, the question was... Uh, well, it's not going to matter in 10 years, and these people shouldn't spend any money for oil wells because we're all going to be driving electric cars in 10 years. And when I got that comment, I went back and found the original on uh, on uh, uh, CNBC's website. And yeah, he said it. I just don't know how people can believe stuff uh, or spout it especially on Financial Info TV, without doing at least a cursory amount of, of uh, research. I think it's going to be incredibly hard to get to 5 or maybe even 7%, even in 10 years. There just isn't that much lithium. Uh, maybe we get some kind of big uh, breakthrough in batteries. We haven't had it yet. Everybody makes announcements. Two, three years go along. We still don't have anything. Um, I think a lot of people got smoked by Musk making the battery cells a little bit bigger, kind of like uh, saying that uh, he's made a much better battery by going from a C cell to a D cell. It's just larger. It's still the same weight. Uh, and since uh, 2009, uh, lithium-ion batteries have only got about 6% better for holding maybe 7% better by now. Um, chemical stuff goes very slow. But uh, I'm still of the camp that 80% of everything uh, related to inflation is around energy prices. 
And if they won't attack that, and especially uh, from the comments this morning echoing the failed policies of Jimmy Carter, I wonder if anybody's ever studied the history of doing stupid stuff in an energy crisis. But apparently it's not getting through. So can you really blame people for being incredibly bearish? My belief, though, is that a lot of people do get it. Uh, you can see this subtle shift in the newspapers over the last week or two. And uh, no, they're not willing to give up uh, the ship. They're telling everybody to maybe change course. Uh, some people just not going to get it, or at least they haven't gotten it yet. But uh, I imagine after a little bit more political pressure, uh, especially after the last few weeks of primaries, uh, they're not going to want to all lose their seats. So they're going to decide that maybe it's time to get on the side of drill, baby, drill. I think maybe we could have some kind of movement like that. It's going to take a while, though. I don't think it's going to happen right away. Uh, crude, of course, uh, ha hovering around 120 bucks. Uh, the average price of gasoline today did hit an all-time high at $5.01 across the country. Uh, at lunch, I went up and got gas. And I thought I had a, a bad problem with my big truck, my big four-door uh, ground-pounding uh, thing. But uh, I, I was a piker next to this guy in front of me with his RV uh, who put $650 <laughs> in his RV. So I felt a little better. I didn't know how far he was going on it, uh, if that's the entire summer. Uh, but I doubt it. I imagine he's uh, he's going far, but... Man, $650 to fill up your RV, that's a, a bit of a stretch. Anyway, we'll watch what happens. Uh, again, a lot of, uh, of uh, stuff. I could be wrong about everything. I could be all wet. But uh, you know what? Uh, I got a pretty high batting average. Uh, it may take a long time for a lot of the stuff that I believe to come true, so I tend to spend a lot more time looking at charts. But, uh, you know... Whether it's Bitcoin or any of the rest of the stuff, yeah, yeah, I've seen all these scams come and go. And as uh, one of my friends of my dad used to say, you can't snow the snowman. This guy was impervious uh, to propaganda, uh, and uh, he called himself the snowman, which I always thought that was it. Because he said he could snow more people than anybody, and when they came to snow him, there's no snow in the snowman. Anyway, uh, we'll see what happens out here again. I think we're probably going to test the lows of yesterday. We're going to kind of bounce around in some rooms. Uh, we've got another 15 minutes before Powell starts speaking. It's actually a fairly narrow range. Uh, I, I think a lot of people were set up for a much higher range. And as I said before, I'm thinking Thursday or Friday. There's a couple of reasons why I put in the newsletter that, that you know, that a, a, a pop Going into the three-day weekend is, uh, I think, highly probable. I think a lot of people have been short for a while. Do they want to go into a three-day weekend and have that money out there and get a potential pop on Tuesday? You know, they may just want to start uh, taking a little money off the table for the downside and getting ready for the next pop so they can short it uh, and move forward. We'll be back in a minute. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at 1 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 Actually, type. There we go. 877-927-6648. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, burning questions. Uh, not that you need a, you know, kind of question you need a doctor for if it's burning. But uh, if you have burning questions, especially technology, uh, why we hold our breaths and wait, um, give me a call. Also, email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, what else do we have? Okay, we get caught up here. Get any other questions? Uh, eh, let's do a little history and then we'll move on. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. And, of course, on this day in 1949, on June 15th, that's today, if you live in uh, Lutz, Florida, MIT, that's the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Again, if you live in Lutz, Jay Forrester recorded a proposal for core memory in his notebook. Uh, and uh, we were talking about uh, beginning computers yesterday a bit. Um, I just had a thought again today when I saw this. Uh, because uh, we talked about building my first electronic computer, uh, Altair 8080. It used a thing called core memory, which is what this guy is famous for and ended up getting patents for. Uh, but uh, they're little, these things are actually about five times bigger uh, than they are in real life, but they're little tiny magnetic donuts, and you run wires through two different directions. And you can magnetize them or demagnetize them for a one or a zero. Uh, anyway, I started making these. Uh, my grandmother lived with us uh, pretty much since I was a, uh, a, uh, about three months old. And uh, she was always sewing and doing everything else. And she saw me doing this uh, because I had to sew my own memory for it. And she got involved and started sewing uh, the memory, which is, uh, you know, she was on all those quilter uh, knitter kind of things, and uh, right up her alley. So anyway, she helped me make a bunch. Then uh, all the other guys in the computer club in the city f 
found out <laughs> about it because it looks so pretty and nice. Uh, they wanted my grandmother to do it. And pretty soon uh, there was a sh – she had a little business, and it only ran for a couple of years because uh, memory did end up becoming semiconductors. Uh, but they uh, had a thriving business for a couple of years, her and about uh, four or five of our, her friends, uh, sewing memory together. But uh, that's what core memory is, uh, just a way to magnetize a little magnetic donut. In reality, these things are probably the holes are about as uh, if you're watching on Tiger TV or whatever, uh, about the size of a pencil lead. They're not very thick. Uh, before that, uh, memory was uh, tough to get. You could use a vacuum tube, but that was very expensive and costs uh, huge amounts of uh, uh, dollars in just electricity, much less uh, them failing from time to time. Uh, but uh, you know, before this, they would take real long runs of copper wire, uh, like, you know, 500 feet of it. And that would just be enough uh, of a delay to put power in one side and get it back the other. Uh, they could hold a one or a zero in it and recover it. And then they'd have to recharge and send the signal again to hold that level. But uh, can you imagine having to have 500 feet of copper wire for every bit in your computer? Well, that's kind of how they did it before they actually got core memory. Or, you know, they had a handful of tubes, but wasn't enough. Um, anyway, you could fit about 4K of memory or 8K of memory, depending on which uh, board you bought for the Altair 8080. Uh, and that was it. Now, of course, we have Samsung, um, Micron, Hymix. We've got a ton of different companies, and they all make memory. As I like to say, this is uh, the product in computerdom that is the equivalent to ball bearings. When we wanted to defeat the Nazis, we went right after the ball bearing plants because nothing moved without them. Uh, but the uh, I learned that, of course, from Stalag. Uh, what is it? Uh, Stalag 13 or what was it? Uh, Hogan's Heroes. They were always going after the ball bearing plant down by Frankfurt. Of course, I learned everything about World War II from Hogan's Heroes. On this day in 1949, and there's, there, I think they're still fighting over who had uh, the uh, rights to core memory. 877-6, uh, 877-927-777, I can't even say it now. They've got me going. Let's check back in in the market. Uh, we got another couple of minutes for uh, the Fed to start talking, uh, but uh, we're up about 15 points. I wasn't expecting a lot today. Uh, if you would have tuned into the Tiger's Den, which you can do for a, a mere $1 a year, seems to me, uh, how could they uh, ask for just so much for so little? But they do. And I put in there, which was the kind of the standard pattern for these days, uh, which is they have a bounce they pretty much give about half of that bounce back, and then the Fed meeting comes along, and you can find out. I'm just assuming that most people are short going into these, thinking that everybody's going to sell off the uh, the market, and they're probably sitting on some decent money, and they just want to go ahead and cover their shorts uh, positions off, and that gives you a kind of a little bit of a bounce. Uh, but uh, people want to get out of long and short positions until the Fed's done talking. And then you end up with a market like this, which is a lot of sideways, a lot of hurry up and wait. Anyway, let's take a look at some few charts. we got some questions. Uh, back to the usual suspects like Microsoft. Um, Alan wants to know whether or not there's anything really going on. You gapped up. It's on light volumes so far. But as we've been talking, a lot of these lows as of late um, are – where they broke through the lows. Uh, in Microsoft, they actually had a little bit more volume than you would think, but you are back in that trading range. Uh, and uh, as we said, you kind of want three gaps, and it depends on how you look at it, Microsoft, but you got kind of your third gap, and now you've got a little doji out here. At most, I think you were looking at 270 if we got some kind of rally out of this. And, yeah, it can be on light volume. I'm thinking that now that if the Fed doesn't do anything like 
uh, drop the baby Ruth in the punch bowl today. We could maybe get some kind of small uh, rally, uh, maybe into Friday and maybe into uh, July the 4th. Maybe it gets things get a little bit better. Uh, we've got a uh, meeting next week, uh, or the U.S. Uh, White House has a meeting next week with the Saudis. They're supposed to put together some kind of deal for pumping more crude. Maybe that brings down crude just a little, although it's down a little bit since the announcement, a couple of bucks. So maybe you have a little bit of a pullback in crude. Maybe that helps things out until July the, the 4th. But uh, just always was thinking that we had some kind of move into July 4th. That was probably where we wanted to sell it. Uh, email me at path at pfnn.com and give me a call at 727. Oh, God, I'm not going to be able to say it today. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, so back. I do not see uh, how on the boob tube quite yet. We're up 12 points on the S&P cash. Dow is flat. NASDAQ up 127. Russell up 11. When we go to the commodities, as I said, uh, crude kind of pulled back a little bit. One, uh, 1673. Uh, gold, uh, 1824.90. Silver up 59 cents, actually. Uh, the winner, winner chicken dinner out here, almost 3% higher. Uh, is there anything else going on? Uh, first question out here is looking at the TLT. Uh, I've been uh, looking and thinking that we maybe get a bounce up to 120 uh, before this thing 
gap down and blew away the last couple of days. And mostly that was uh, apparently the Fed uh, talking up last Thursday. They started letting everybody know, or Wednesday night, that uh, three quarters of a percent was uh, coming. And they, uh, you know, hey, hey, we got, we're going to do three quarters next week. You better let everybody, you know, you better let everybody know, but don't let them know you heard it from us. And, of course, uh, by Wednesday, Thursday last week, it was everywhere. And you ended up with the big gap downs and the move lowers out here. But uh, you can't really figure out uh, much more than that. Um, kind of interesting to see that you don't have too big of a move out here on it today. But we shall see. Uh, still problematic. But now that you've busted this level, maybe you get back to 114. Um, that would be kind of the big picture on uh, this right now. But let's go ahead and put some uh, retracement levels. Um, if you're thinking about a longer term uh, resistance level, if you want to short this again, um, it is on Confluence 117.51 to 11790. So you got about 40 cents there. It's right in the middle of this gap uh, from 531. So that is the setup I like. Doesn't mean it's going to go there. But if you wanted the best risk reward for pulling the string once again on bonds going forward over the next couple of years, um, 117.51 to 117. I think it's even, isn't it? 117.90. No, that's what it is. 117.51 to 117.90. So you got about a 40 cent range there. That's the very bottom of that gap down from uh, May 31st. Um, that would be the next uh, bounce before I would want to pull the trigger short once again. Okay. And Powell's uh, doing a little bit of jibber and a little bit of jabber. Uh, question Do I see a low in Micron quite yet? Speaking of memory. Yeah, you're just going sideways here, light volume. Again, I wouldn't read too much into maybe yesterday and today's movement. It's all about what he says and the tone he says it in. And I'm not going to be surprised if they get that tone wrong. So it's not looking bad. Anyway, uh, other questions out here on Tesla. Do I still think uh, that uh, it's headed lower? I think it's kind of hanging around ready to bust out the $600 low. I wouldn't be shorting it here. Um, again, we're talking about knowing your risk reward levels and the best way is confluence. On Tesla, that confluence comes in at uh, 823 to 827. So you got about four bucks of a range. And again, that's right underneath this uh, big gap down uh, from uh, May 9th. So could you get up there? I'm sure everybody and their dog short this thing. So could you, you know, is it possible to bounce? I'm not a big fan of going short at stocks at lows. You want to wait for the bounce. In this case, you got a, a fairly nice retracement up to the 50% level at 788 of this move down from May 4th uh, to May 24th. So you got your 50% bounce almost exactly. What is that? Uh, 778, you got to 792. So there was your 50% retracement. Maybe you wanted to pull the trigger on that thing. I don't see a lot down here. We had just slightly more volume uh, yesterday with uh, 32 million shares. And the day before, about 34 million shares into this 30 million share low. So I'm going to say that the odds are probably just a little bit more or better uh, than a flip of a coin. For the long term, uh, well, let's see if we go back here and find this, that long term low, which I think is going to get tested. And that's that uh, 539.49 March 5th low. And I think that could be, again, one of those other issues. Many people in the den talking about how higher interest rates are going to affect a lot. Um, you know, if you're buying a car, suddenly it's a whopping more for uh, buying a $120,000 Tesla. Uh, we were looking at some of the other cars uh, that are coming out, and someone found a Ford F-150, 
And I couldn't read the whole thing other than I looked to me like it was an $80,000 truck and they were trying to get 140 grand for it because no one else could get it or there weren't enough of them or whatever. And that's called uh, additional dealer profit, ADP. If you've never been on a lot and seen somebody gouging uh, prices at the car dealer, well, just remember that next time you start to think a, a little bit about them when they have tons of cars and can't sell any. And they're probably getting very close to that soon. Okay, so we've looked at that. Uh, question about workday from Ronald. Uh, I will take a quick look. <laughs> yes, uh, we're up three points now. And yes, somebody find that gal on CNBC a chair. She's pregnant. She looks like she's going to deliver in the next five minutes. And they're making her stroll around out there. Um, I don't normally watch it on days like this. I certainly have the uh, tube on, mostly to watch the ticker, because uh, I'm always deathly afraid that uh, my ticker will start lagging. Um, it doesn't happen much anymore, but maybe 20 years of doing this, or 20 now, 24 uh, doing this, I go back to the days the Internet wasn't uh, as good as it is today. But even then, you never know when you're going to lose something or it's going to slow down. I always like to have a second way of doing it. And I also like to see the big headlines that they plaster underneath Powell's face uh, that uh, kind of summarize what he's saying sometimes. We were moving expeditiously on rates, it says. Well, that tells me a great deal. Thanks a lot. But... Uh, yeah, I like to look at that and make sure that nothing much is moving. Anyway, we're about flat on the day, so we're pretty close to testing lows. We'll see if he pulls a rabbit out of his hat, but uh, that's about it. 877 uh, um, Same thing in Workday. If you're looking for some lows, there are a lot of really great confluence levels that have appeared in the last couple of days. Uh I, and we talk about these all the time, but if you're either thinking to go long or you're thinking that, well, I've had a great ABC down and work day now, I want to uh, take my money and wait for the next move higher. Confluence ranges probably have the best batting average of anything I know. There are two Fibonacci retracement levels, the 618 of one to the 382 of the other. Back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. And as we return, we'll be back here in a minute. Um, yeah, anyway, we're talking about workday. Market's taken off like a rocket, I think, because he got done with his speech and everybody thinks that that's uh, kind of great. So we're at uh, 3808. So you had about five minutes to, to buy the lows at here in the S&P today, which is pretty uh, standard for the S&P cash. I can imagine that we might do some back and forth uh, but uh, as I said, I've been kind of trying to figure out how we get uh, to this. And I got a question, that, which is, where's the upside? Well, it's 4,000 on the S&P for Friday. So, you know, how do we get there? Does he say a lot of other stuff? Uh, don't know, but uh, we shall see. In fact, you know, I think we can probably, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a lot of back and fill here today. And then we probably see a lot of people start thinking about covering before the weekend. And maybe that starts tomorrow. Maybe that starts Friday morning. But maybe we've probably gotten the, the uh, bulk of what we're going to get now out of it. Uh, and uh, we're going to need to digest this till about 3.30. And then we'll probably get an idea. As I said, I'm going to wait around to, till about 3, 3.15, look at the options and then see whether or not this is a, a, a big bear trap or a big bull trap, but uh, it could be either. Uh, do, do, do. Okay. Gold ripping two. Okay, I did not see that. Is it? Eh. Maybe mine's lagging here. Okay, crude down to 115. Again, maybe that's there's a few other things going on out here. Question about looking at Apple and the rest of the usual suspects as we get out here. Um, yeah, as I said, there were a lot of these that had been testing lows. And depending on how you looked at them, you may or may not have the gaps that you're looking for. Uh, Apple was uh, testing the May, uh, May 20th low. That was 132.61 uh, with 137 million shares. You tested it with a little less, 120, 122 million shares. But you're back into the trading range, which is pretty much all that matters. Again, um, start using confluence levels. Start looking at retracement levels to know where these things are going to go. It's not going to be... Uh, kind of a one and done thing um, on Apple you know I think you could get maybe 141 ish 140 by Friday we'll have to look at the options today I'll talk about it more tomorrow but yeah you have to get a whole lot no can you get a lot Tesla had a nice bounce it's uh, up to 700 uh, bucks or a little bit more uh, okay, let's take a look at uh, the most highly shorted stocks uh, probably ever uh, for big cap. And that is Advanced Micro. So you got a nice uh, move out here against a previous low, 
with a lighter volume. Your max uh, volume uh, down to 83.27 on May 12th was 129 million shares. You came to, into it with under uh, 100 million shares, and now you're out. Uh, 95 bucks is the 382 retracement. 97.70 is the 50% uh, retracement. So could you make uh, 95 bucks? I think that would be uh, the top of that previous gap by Friday. I think it's possible. Uh, again, I'm hoping that you don't get all of the bounce today because that generally means that it'll exhaust itself for up 80 points. And then you won't get much Thursday or Friday. Okay. Question on CCJ. Okay. Uh, a little bit far. I guess this is more about China. It's not getting the kind of love that some of the other stuff is out here. Um, you just got a big doji on it, so no sign to do anything. Let's take a look at uh, UNG and Boyle, as people have talked about it. Um, yeah, you're kind of just going sideways on that today, so nothing new. Take a look at Boyle on that side of it. Yeah, kind of the same thing. You're at a 50% retracement uh, of the big move off the uh, lows uh, for natural gas. And, I mean, this is the one going back to December 8, uh, 28th of uh, 2020. That's $17.05 on Boyle up to one forty fifty. So you're basically back, as I said, back into this 50% level right now at this price. So you probably should see some decent support there, but I'm still suspecting you want to go late August uh, into natural gas again. I don't see a lot happening right now. Uh, two, 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 okay. Question about DLR. As, oh, not DLS, DLR, he said, as we continue to do it. Okay. Well, you did test the previous lows. Yeah, you did it on more volume, though. So you're probably going to get a retest of 125. This may be the best house in a bad neighborhood for real estate trusts. But that's it. Question about the XME from Jonathan. Let's take a look at that. Um, now, I do uh, kind of like this setup here. You've got a lot of things that are very attractive for me and one of those is a nice test of this may 12th low $47.65 with 10 million shares you came into it with less than 7 million shares you're back into the trading right trading range now so what are you at here you're at 49 bucks um a move higher you've got confluence at 54.60 so that could be your bounce back into the rest of the materials but uh, that is going to be very tough sledding above 54 for the XME. So keep an eye on that. What else do we have? Uh, question on the IBB from Sandy. Thanks, Sandy. She says she's a first-time emailer here to the show. Um, same thing with uh, IBB. Uh, you tested a 4.7 million share low. That's May 12th at 105.39. Got to 104.67. Uh, you've bounced today. You got some decent volume. Confluence on that takes you to 116. So, yeah, is there, you know, am I going to get involved for a 6% move in an equity? No, maybe there's some reasons to buy uh, some calls or something to get the bounce out of that, but don't see it. The thing I dislike as I've said before, is a lot of these have two gaps down and generally you get one third gap down. And the problem is maybe you get a retest of the 105 low for the third gap. But uh, that's kind of it. And we'll see uh, as I check back in. Yeah, 3803. Most likely, I suspect we pull back to about 3780 or so. And then we're going to see the last 30 minutes of the day and which way everybody goes. But probably a little bit high to the, we tried the low, we've tried the high now. I guess if we're going to kind of try to uh, 
get a, finish Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Well, if you've been watching the market here, yeah, you probably went on Amazon and worked a, uh, a truck full of Rolades. Uh, the market gas here having some big swings as I thought probably pulling back to about 3780 or so I always talk about the cash by the way for people that are asking um, much harder to move uh, a lot of stocks than a thinly traded uh, future uh, outside of market hours although the futures do track fairly closely of course during the day but uh, I tend to almost always use the uh, S&P cash a handful of years uh, ago, the S&P futures really got thin as the uh, trading computers uh, got extremely good at running people in and out of positions overnight. So, uh, yeah, just a thought. So, what else do we have here? Let's take a look at the volume. Uh, volume did shrink a bit yesterday, which makes me think that we have a good chance of a low. Uh, we went from about 15 billion shares to about 12 billion shares yesterday. So there was enough down there at that low to make us think that we had at least a temporary low. A low does not mean you're going higher. We now have uh, some equivocation about the future from the Fed. Of course, I'm on uh, the air now, so I haven't been able to listen to exactly what he said. And maybe that's a good thing probably is because whatever it was uh, probably not the truth but 
it probably close to the truth. And yeah, it's kind of probably still important to know. Anyway, we still have some stuff that's weak out here. As I said, uh, been looking maybe more into tomorrow or maybe Friday. In fact, uh, with quad witching this uh, weekend or this Friday, we've got a three-day weekend with June uh, Juneteenth. Someone needs to get on the marketing board of the Juneteenth folks and give it a little snappier name. July, July the 4th, that sings. Juneteenth? Don't know about that. Or marketing. Sell when you have to. Oh. <laughs> Sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most.